Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1976, the topic is Mindset and the title is Overeating at Night. Oh no. (laughs) So I just got done doing a nutrition consultation with a client. We were doing the initial consultation where I get to meet them, get to know more about them, and then we're going to kind of embark on a a nice fun journey of losing some body fat, and then they want to build up some muscle. So it'll be a really fun goal. Now, one of the things that we talked about was what they thought was kind of holding them back now from being leaner, which was their goal. And they said one of the reasons was they have a late night sweet tooth. They tend to overeat at night and they believe that is holding them back from being leaner. So in the part, in, in the consultation, I discussed the common reasons why people tend to overeat at night and I thought that would make a good podcast. So I wanted to go through those today in today's podcast, talk a little bit about them, about why, why people do it, what are some corrective actions we can uh, apply and take, and hopefully this gives anybody struggling with this issue uh, an approach, an approach to try. Something you can throw out there and see if it helps. <laughs> so three common reasons why people tend to overeat at night is they actually undereat during the day. They eat too little during the day. So at night, their body is just trying to make up the amount of calories it should have been having during the day, but it's doing it all at night, and therefore we feel like it's it's too much at the end of the night. Another reason is it's habitual. There's just... It's what we always do. Third reason is we want a happy hormone release. We are seeking some comfort and we're finding it in food. So if we go through the first reason that we're eating too little during the day, that is actually very common. People tend to be very busy during the day. Uh, The last thing they prioritize is eating food. And then at night they have dinner. Their body goes, oh, you know, what is this? This is amazing. I love this. (laughs) Can you give us more? And then all of a sudden after dinner, we find ourselves snacking on a little bit of extra. So that is very common that if our body feels underfed during the day, it will try to get that food back that it should have had during the day, it'll try to get that back at night, but unfortunately it tries to get back even more. Typically how our body responds to being um, mistimed food-wise is if we're very active and we have to expend calories, but our body doesn't feel nutritionally supported, it will want to replace the calories that it had to expend in a deficit, but it'll want to replace it and then actually put some padding onto it. An example of this that I like is, let's say you have a rainy day fund of $10,000, but an emergency comes up and you had to spend, say, $6,000, $7,000, maybe you had to re-roof a house, whatever it might be, get a couple dozen water heaters, whatever Whatever happened, something happened, and you had $10,000, you end up spending, say, $7,000 or $8,000. And you're like, holy crap, you know, I, I covered it. But, oof, that kind of got me pretty close. If I had another rainy day right after that rainy day, I wouldn't have been able to cover that. So now you start to say, okay, let me rebuild my rainy day fund. But instead of taking it to $10,000, maybe I need to pad it up to twelve dollars or fourteen dollars or even $15,000. So you got pushed close to the limit. Your response is, let me give myself a little more protection. Our body is the same way with calories. We have to expend calories beyond what we're taking in to a considerable amount. Our body tries to protect and build more back in. Let's say out of your 10,000 rainy day fund, you only have to spend one or 2,000. You'll put that back and you don't need to really pad that, right? That's what it was for. So if we have an appropriate caloric deficit during the day, our body doesn't look to kind of pad extra on, and that's good because that's how diets work, is a slow controlled deficit helps us lose body fat. But if the deficit is too large, just like if we had to pay off too much of a chunk of our rainy day fund, the body wants to replace it and add extra back in. How we correct for that? Two general corrections is number one, eat more during the day, and that is my preferred method uh, for clients, is you don't have to eat more volume of food. You can actually just pick more nutriently-dense foods. 
pick foods that have more calories per volume of food, and that helps a lot. Uh, one e- e- easy example would be is increasing fat-containing foods during the day. Uh, so if you typically have uh, a snack of fruit, but you have that same volume in nuts, like maybe mixed nuts or trail, trail mix, you're going to have way more calories in the mixed nuts than you would for the fruit. Now, that isn't bad. It's not like you're going to counter your goal of fat loss. What we would look to do is we would try to minimize the deficit, not erase the deficit, but minimize the deficit. We might find that a person eats, say, 80% of their calories in the last third of the day. That's pretty extreme. So we might want to work to maybe only having 40% of their calories at the last third of the day and then have 30 and 30% in the first third and the second third of the day. That's actually how I tend to have clients break their days down into thirds because if we manage the day that we're awake for, so typically we sleep six to eight hours, so you're awake for 16 to 18 hours. If we divide that by three, it's roughly five to six hours. The first five to six hours of the day, we have a chunk of time, so that's the first five to six hours. Then we have the second five to six hours, and we have the final five or so hours of being awake. Most people eat a really high percentage of their calories in that final third. And if you do, and that causes you to have the sensation of overeating at night, we would just increase the calorie allocation, how many calories you're eating, in the first and second thirds of the day. And then you're less hungry at the final third of the day. So you get through dinner, and you're like, eh, I just don't even, I don't even feel the need to eat after dinner now. I've had enough calories during the day that I don't feel like I need so much at night. That's one method. The other method is to account for your calories after dinner as part of a controlled daily intake. This would be similar to intermittent fasting. So somebody might say is, you know, if I'm overeating at night, you would look and say, well, how many calories you're supposed to have every day? Maybe we do the math, you find out you're supposed to have 2,000 calories. Right now you're eating maybe 22 to 2,400 calories, and that's what's holding you back from making progress. So we would say, okay, go ahead and have 2,000, but you can have it at night if you want, but we have to make sure it's capped at 2,000. So if you still have 80% of your calories in the evening, That's going to be okay, assuming we can still maintain the proper caloric amount in the evening. Meaning you're eating at night, but you're not overeating what what your target is. I don't like that as much because people tend to have a harder time controlling that hunger that they have at night if they've really gone a long part of the day without any food. Now, Intermittent fasting works for a lot of people, but I've also seen a lot of people that it does not work for. Uh, I, I tend to lean people towards eating more earlier in the day, and that has been a better correction uh, overwhelmingly majority of the time than trying to allow for the eating at night, but to try to control it within a certain calorie window. They, they still tend to overeat, but that is a correction and it does work for some people. The second reason that people tend to overeat at night is just habitual. It's, it's a routine. Maybe you have dinner, you do a few chores to wrap up the day, and then you sit on the couch and watch TV, and anytime you sit on the couch and watch TV, you also have some food in your hands. You just have this snack, and it's what you do. It's what we do. We have dinner, we do chores, we could put the kids to bed, you know, clean up around the house, then we sit down, and we finally get to enjoy ourselves and just relax. And often that feels better with some food. (laughs) So it's just a habitual thing. It's what we do. And then we have to realize, okay, well, if I'm not making the progress I want, and I see that I'm eating pretty much all the time after dinner, and at that time, sometimes I make healthy choices, sometimes I don't. We can say, okay, there's an opportunity for us to improve upon what we do quality-wise maybe make some adjustments and be able to make the progress that we're looking for. So some corrections that we have. One is an activity substitution. So rather than sitting on the couch and eating, maybe you'll sit on the couch and do Wordle. If you remember, I don't know if Wordle is still popular, but that was a big craze. And people would sit down, they'd do Wordle, and that's something you can 
tactile do with your fingers and hands and it keeps your brain a little busy while you're supposed to be watching tv but you're not watching tv that's just the way it goes <laughs> you just want some noise in the background while you do some wordle that can work maybe you like sudoku or some other puzzles uh, maybe you want to go through and see what your friends posted on social media. If somebody posted something, you want to click like, you know, make a little comment. So that could be a time to check in with friends virtually. You can also just do that for real. You can call people and text people. Uh, you can also maybe enter your daily foods in your food tracking app. If you struggle to find a time to do that, that could be a good replacement for eating at night. So one correction is a activity substitution. Another correction we have is to create controlled but appealing options, meaning sometimes we eat well, you know, we just have, oh, I just want a protein bar, just a little bit of something. Great, you know, fits within my calories, really protein-rich item. You feel good about that. But sometimes you eat your face full of cookies or some ice cream, and you're like, crap, I shouldn't have really had that. So if we are going to have something at night, we can say, hey, here are four or five options that I know are good for me that I actually like. And knowing what they are ahead of time helps us make those choices more often than the cookies and cakes and crap foods. So you can do 100 calorie snack packs of cookies and crackers if you want. You can also do lower calorie but high volume options. Uh, some people will whip like a uh, mix together whipped cream and jello and that doesn't really add up to a lot of calories but it's something that's kind of like a, a pudding consistency uh there's people who also just eat jello uh there's a lot of foods that are very low in calorie but they're high in volume and that can be something that you can kind of snack on that will not help if you're actually in a caloric deficit so if your real reason for eating at night is the first reason which was you're eating too little during the day you'll find that these food substitutions don't work because you're going to eat it and then go oh i'm still really hungry and i want like all of these <laughs> so if you find that happening then you're probably going to look more to that first reason and maybe start adjusting your daily calories and that can maybe be the correction you're looking for the third reason why we tend to overeat at night is we want some happy hormones we want we want to be happy we've made it through a day we survived the day so the food is seen as a reward which releases dopamine, and we like that. <laughs> or it can be seen as a comfort. Maybe you have an emotional, stressful day, and you just want uh, uh, you know, a hug via some brownies. <laughs> you want a brownie hug, you know? Uh, and that can be the serotonin release. So dopamine we tend to get from rewards. Serotonin we get from just things that make us happy. Uh, and it's nice. It's nice to end the day feeling like you made it through and you got a reward or feeling like you got something good at the end of the day. I was telling the client that whenever I was really overextended, when I first opened the gym, I was training 50 hours face-to-face -face every week. Then I still had to write their nutrition programs, training programs. I had to clean the gym, train myself, do all the things you typically have to do for financial crap. And I mean, I was just destroyed, absolutely destroyed. But one thing that I really liked was after after I trained everybody, after I trained myself, after I did the programs, it would be somewhere between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And I'm like, it's finally my time. When it's my time, I just want to eat something warm. I was just, can I eat something warm and fresh? <laughs> so I would cook some steak and rice. Maybe I would swing by. Uh, the Walmarts <laughs> and pick up like a frozen pizza just something that I could make and it was warm and fresh when I ate it because typically during the day I had to eat just anything and everything that I could get my hands on and face on uh, whether it was cold chicken and rice whether it was you know the third protein shake of the day whatever it was it was typically not an enjoyed food uh, and it wasn't usually in like the best state. I would eat it if it was, you know, borderline stale. I just gotta get some calories in my face. I don't care. So at night, I was like, I want to freaking enjoy it. I want it to be a good thing. And I would realize that that was why I was eating. Like I was eating at night because I needed to. But that sensation of the need for the want for a reward or some happiness, I could definitely resonate with, and I can definitely uh, associate with that feeling. So some corrections that we can do if that's why you tend to overeat at night is if you're eating because it brings you happiness, we have to look for other things that can make you happy. Maybe you can search on uh, social media, maybe Instagram. You can find some funny memes to send to some friends. 
you know, finding the memes makes you laugh along the way. Then when you find a really good one, you send it to your friend, and you wait for your friend to respond, and that's a fun experience, right? That's something happy, and it can be done in the same amount of time that you would eat. So you can set a timer for it if you're afraid, like, of doom scrolling and spending three hours. Just set a 15-minute timer, and whatever funny stuff you can find in 15 minutes, you send it to a friend, and then that's fun. They either text you back that night or the next day, and you get a couple laughs, and it's an enjoyable experience. You can also just look at some cat and dog videos. Man, they're everywhere, and they're amazing. They're fun. They're awesome. <laughs> you can also chat with a friend, maybe text with a friend. Just do something else that makes you happy other than food. For a reward, rather than rewarding yourself to get through the day, so you're rewarding yourself at the end of the day with food, you can actually get up early, I know, you know, God forbid, <laughs> but we can actually get up early and start the day with stuff for yourself. Start the day with me time. Don't end the day with me time. Because when we end the day with me time, when we make it through the day, we can finally do something for us. We're dead tired, we're hungry, and what we do for us is usually really poor quality. Whereas if I go to bed a little bit earlier than I normally do, I wake up a little earlier than I normally do, I feel way better in the morning. I'm more fired up and excited to do productive things than to sit and eat junk food. And typically, people don't wake up and want to eat junk food. They want to wake up and, you know, get something fast in their face or just freaking start crushing the day. So it's better to reward yourself with me time at the beginning of the day rather than at the end of the day. You can also do other things, you know, that... Often when people want, like when they sit down and they have this quietness and they eat food, you can have the quietness while you go for a walk. You can actually do some meditation. I know these sound really like, you know, bullcrap kind of things, but they, the people who actually do this stuff genuinely says it works. I've actually played with all of these elements and they freaking work. Going for a walk with my wife uh, when she ends her work day is one of the, like, the best parts of the day. That's a wonderful part of the day. Get to hear about her day and all the chaos that's happening for her. <laughs> and then uh, we just kind of talk about the neighbor's yards, like how does their grass get so green, or looking at somebody's like the color of the front door, and you're like, oh, God, that's hideous. So whatever it is. <laughs> so we just enjoy the time with us, like just talking to each other and being out in nature. And I will enjoy that much more than I would some random piece of food. So those are some corrections we can look for if you're overeating at night for a happy hormone release, is we just have to find other things that seem as a reward for the day or that give us some happiness for the day. But those are the three main common reasons, is if you're overeating at night, it's because you're under eating during the day. Or it's habitual and it's just something you do that you're kind of doing mindlessly. Or you're wanting some kind of happy hormone release and some comfort and we have to find some other ways of achieving that. So if you feel like you're overeating at night and that it's holding you back towards your goals, hopefully you connected with one of these common reasons and now you can have like some corrective actions, some ideas, some plan of attack on how to address the overeating and feel more in control of your food intake so that we can actually crush your goals. If you have any questions, if you need anything, you can always go to our website, www.brutalirongym.com. You can always send me a message from the website. You can see the other services we have uh, if you want any help in any way. We also have a ton of free information as well. It's all there on the website. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on our website. Also, if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Jim. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.